Hi guys, it's Julia. Today is day 26 of our Wisdom Devotional series, and we are in chapter 26 of the book of Proverbs. Um, I'm reading from the ESV version, but before we jump in, just going to pray. So Father, I thank you so much for today, Lord. I thank you for all the ways that you've been revealing yourself to us. Um, God, I pray that you continue to teach us what it means to walk in love and to walk in wisdom, uh, God, and to be your witnesses here on earth, Lord. We love you, we praise you, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so I've been loving reading through the book of Proverbs. I think every time I do, it's kind of a punch in the gut a little bit. Um, none of us naturally live this kind of wise lifestyle um, that is laid out in the book of Proverbs. We very naturally are wired to be foolish, to uh, rebel against the Lord, to do the opposite of what is recommended in this book. So I think for all of us, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a a training guide for, for how we need to uh, check ourselves a little bit and, and change the way we interact with people and, and even ourselves and the Lord. So I love this book. I think it's very timely. Um, I think that right now you can just see so much foolishness around us in the culture that we're living in. And I feel like it's magnified because everyone's been stuck at home with maybe like the same two or three people. So that's really not great for all of our mental health. And we're all just kind of like living on the internet. We're living on Facebook and YouTube and every website that we enjoy going to, um, which is also not really great for mental health. So I feel like our capacity as a culture to live wisely is like at an all time low. Um, and then you add to that just high stress, high tension, a lot of cultural, political issues, health issues, and it is just like a whole crazy fest. Um, I, I almost said that in Spanish, <laughs> a whole crazy fest of foolishness online right now, um, which I think is an even bigger call to us as the body of Christ to be examples of these things that we have laid out in Proverbs. So um, this whole chapter is, again, kind of another chapter that ping-pongs back and forth between a couple of different ideas. You have some verses in this chapter that just talk about kind of how difficult it is to interact with a foolish person um, and how difficult it is to give foolish people responsibilities. Uh, you see kind of a couple of rebukes about lazy people or sluggards and, and how that really is not a fruitful lifestyle. Um, and then you see some other things kind of popped in there regarding uh, the way that we communicate to each other and um, quarreling and all of that. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of pick out a couple of verses that I felt like really apply to us in our current situation and that have just been sticking out to me. So the one of them is verse 12. It says, do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There's more hope for a fool than for him. Um, we've seen this phrasing before in the book of Proverbs. It's a, a phrasing that they use several times throughout this book, um, the whole wise in your own eyes or wise in his own eyes phrasing. And it's pretty. It's a pretty simple concept, right? If you're wise in your own eyes, you feel like you've got it all figured out. You really don't need to learn much from somebody else. Um, your opinion is the opinion. It's facts. It's not even opinion anymore. Uh, you don't need to hear from other people with different opinions. Um, you're just kind of set in your ways, set in your thoughts, um, and anyone who disagrees with you is wrong. And this is kind of what it means to be wise in your own eyes. It's this attitude of pride versus an attitude of humility. It's an attitude of my way or the highway. I know what's right. I don't need to learn anything else, whether it be from the Lord or another person. Um, and set of an attitude of humility, of being willing to uh, admit that you're wrong, being able to admit that God has more to teach us, being able to admit that maybe we have something to learn from somebody who's a little bit different from us. Um, it's kind of the opposite of that, this whole concept of being wise in one's own eyes. And I just, I think this stuck out to me because the more and more that I just kind of watch what's going on in the world, um, I feel like this is the culture of the day, to be wise in our own eyes. Like we live in a very canceled culture. Um, everyone wants to post their opinions on social media and on the internet. And if you disagree, if you don't have the exact same opinion, it is like you're not just wrong. You are like pure evil um, or you want to see the country burn or you're just hateful. Like everyone on every different spectrum of any issue has very firm beliefs. And if you disagree with them, it's just like you're canceled. Um, and I think we're seeing that a lot. And I think it's so important for us as Christians to really check ourselves and say, okay, am I adding to that? Or am I really coming in 
and with an attitude of humility, with an attitude of being willing to, whether it be in interpersonal interpersonal relationships or whether it be on Facebook or whether it be in your workplace, wherever it may be, am I willing to be humble and not prideful? Am I willing to say, okay, I've got stuff to learn from everybody around this table? Am I willing to say, God, would you teach me and reveal yourself to me and show me where I've been wrong? Or am I so caught up in what I believe to be true in all of those different arenas of life that I'm not willing to budge? Um, and I'm not talking about budge on things like the deity of Christ or his role in salvation or what we need to do to be saved. Those things are things we don't budge on. Those things are things we don't really need to argue about or fight about. If it's in this book, I'm not budging on it. And I think we should all kind of have that commitment. But I'm just talking about aside from that, are we having an attitude of humility or are we part of the problem? Are we adding to this culture of being wise in our own eyes? Um, because what the scripture says here is that if we are wise in our own eyes, that there's more hope for us than a fool. Um, and or, or there's more hope for a fool than for us. And if you read through this whole book of Proverbs, the fool is like the last thing you want to be, right? Like the fool is the person who is going to dwindle away. The fool is the person who's not going to be left with anything. The fool is the person who there's really no hope for at all. So for them to say this is really saying if we're wise in our own eyes, if we're more characterized by that pridefulness, that self-righteousness, that inability to budge, that inability to hear other sides, that inability to admit that we are wrong, if we're if we're more in that camp, we're basically hopeless. There's really just no hope for us. <laughs> like there's nowhere that we can really go. Um, and I think that that we should be challenged in that to really have an attitude of humility with the people that we are reaching out to, with the people that we're interacting with online, with the people that are in our family, in our workplace, with our friends, God, with, with all of them. We just need to have this attitude of humility and not an attitude of being wise in our own eyes. Um, and I, you know, I was going to go through a couple of other verses, but I, I just really feel so passionately about this. Um, and I think we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of carrying ourselves in this kind of prideful stance, um, where we're not willing to budge or to hear from anybody else rather than carrying ourselves in humility and love and compassion and grace. Um, and so my challenge to you would be to, well, first of all, continue reading the rest of this because there's so much goodness in this chapter, um, but also to just pray that God would humble you as I pray that God would humble me, that God would humble all of us, that we would be able to bring hope and grace and peace into this culture instead of just hopelessness and uh, division and everything that we're kind of seeing right now. Uh, so God bless you and have a great day.